Hey there, my resourceful ravers. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain the various resource types in Resolume Wire. Resource types were added in Resolume 7.22 and overhauled how resources work. 7.22 introduced the image, ISF, LUT3D, and video resource types. Keep in mind that by the time you are watching this video, more resource types might have already been added. The general concept is the same with all these types. They contain a file path to the resource on your computer. Resources can be either constructed using the resource constructor or the resource input nodes. As with all other input nodes, they will show up in your dashboard and in the arena and avenue interface. This allows you to create patches where the user can load their own resources into. In this example, I have made a small effect patch where I use an image to distort the incoming texture. Using the image in node, the user will be able to load in their own images. In Arena, I can simply browse for a suitable image on my drive and add it to the effect. Files can also be added by dragging and dropping them onto the input parameter. The approach is similar for all other resource input nodes. In this example, I have made a patch that simulates the video file being scratched. In Arena, I load it as a source onto an empty clip and add the file. Here I am using the file panel to do so. Note that the resource input nodes also have the ability to contain option counts, similar to nodes like float in, color in, and int in. This allows us to create predefined files that the user can choose from. In this example, I have set the input count on this LUT3D in node to 4. Each option gets its own resource and we're off to the races. In Arena, this effect will select a LUT from a drop down menu and apply it to the clip. I will repeat once more that resources are a path to a file on your disk. If you delete the file, you will break the patch. If you update the file, wire will automatically update. But now you ask yourself, how do I ship patches with resources to other users? This is done through consolidation. When you consolidate a patch, it is saved on your hard drive in a new folder. All the resources will be copied to that new folder and all file paths in your patch will be rerouted to the copies. That was really the basic gist of it. Let's wrap up this tutorial with some tips and tricks for the resource types. A big advantage of the resource type is that you can have a lot of memory intensive resources without actually using them. I have made this patch in wire 7.21.3, using a switch to switch between five different video samplers. Even though I am only using one video sampler at a time, all five samples get rendered either way. This is the patch recreated in wire 7.22. Instead of switching between samplers, I am switching between resources and therefore only rendering one video at a time. Also note that all resources are processed on attribute flow, which is very efficient by default. Check out our tutorial video on attribute flow to learn more about this particular type of flow. A link will be in the video description. Let's roll back a bit and have another look at the auto scratcher patch from earlier. The 7.22 update introduced the duration node, which returns the duration of a given video resource in seconds. In this patch, the duration node is used to make sure that the random number generator for the outpoint and seek parameters do not exceed the clip duration. Let's roll back once more, this time to the image example from earlier. Note that the resize node is used in this patch. The image in and video in nodes will not scale the resource for you, so keep this in mind while patching. And that was all for this tutorial. I hope you've learned something and I'll see you in the next one.